Hey, good Wednesday to you. I'm Storm Team 9 meteorologist Patrick Ellis here with your ENC weather update for this June the 5th, 2013. Nice and dry today. Not too bad of a day across eastern North Carolina. Started off with some clouds, but have since thinned out. Now we've got mostly sunny skies. We were talking about that mixture of sun and clouds today, but it has definitely worked out for us. Temperatures mainly in the low 80s across inland locations. But all the nice weather has got to go by the wayside. We have been talking about this tropical disturbance the last several days, and now it's looking more and more likely that we are definitely going to be affected by it as we head in towards the latter half of the week. Let's take a few sky, uh, sky cam shots for this afternoon. Here's the look from the Bridgepoint Hotel and Marina down in New Bern. Looking back towards historic downtown New Bern and the Trent River and the marina down there. Nice afternoon, mostly sunny skies. 81 the current temperature. Uh, we're right on par with uh, with thinking for today as far as the uh, the overall uh, synoptic pattern, the uh, pattern that we have this afternoon across eastern North Carolina. Anybody, anybody jealous of these folks down at the beach? I mean, just nice down there this afternoon. Uh, mostly sunny skies. Right now, uh, Beaufort's checking in with 79. Nice and uh, just a nice afternoon to head down to the beach. I uh, can't ask for much better weather than this, but no one's going to be down at the beach uh, going towards tomorrow. Uh, everybody's going to be uh, trying to get away from the beach uh, with this storm system making its way up the coast. All right, let's go ahead and talk modeling. Uh, we're getting close to time now, so it's going to be a little bit more, uh, I think it's getting into a good range as far as uh, trying to pinpoint where this is going to be heading. Uh, let's go ahead and look at what's going on this afternoon. Here's the low now uh, down over uh, the central Gulf of Mexico. All the moisture associated with it has been pushed to the east. Uh, there's a lot of dry air wrapping around on the western side of this thing, so there's not a whole lot of moisture on the western side of the low. But there's a whole bunch of it just on the eastern side of the low, all through Florida, seeing a lot of rain this afternoon. Uh, and what we're also going to be watching is a trough of low pressure that's going to be diving southward as we head through, uh, say, Friday and also for Saturday as well. Here we go on uh, Thursday afternoon. This is tomorrow afternoon. By this time, we're already starting to see some of the showers and thunderstorms starting to spread into eastern North Carolina. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of the moisture gets in here as early as tomorrow morning. Uh, but I think tomorrow is going to be more of a scattered event, more so than a widespread rain uh, type of situation. But you see the energy getting picked up by the trough as it's coming up through the flow. And you see where it's heading. If it stays on that track, it's definitely going to be coming up through eastern North Carolina. We'll step through this hour by hour, and we'll show you what's going to happen. You see the whole piece of energy kind of shears out, but it's going to hold its shape in uh, at the surface, it looks like, as it's coming up the coast. Here's early, uh, this is 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday, and basically most of the energy is on top of us at that point. Uh, most of the computer models are showing that the heaviest rainfall is likely going to happen between about 2 o'clock in the morning on Friday through at least mid-afternoon on Friday afternoon. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if some of it actually continues into, uh, into Friday evening, but it looks like the bulk of the rain is going to happen Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. And it's going to get out of here fairly quick. It's a fast flow, and it gets out of here fairly quickly. Here's Friday afternoon, and the low is basically sitting just in the uh, the northeastern half of the viewing area at this point. We'll step a little forward, and here's 8 o'clock, already up towards Virginia. But there's a secondary uh, piece of energy here. That's the cold front that's going to be sweeping through here on, uh, on uh, Saturday and bring us another chance for rain showers across eastern North Carolina. So it looks like it's going to be a wet couple of days nonetheless. Now our thinking with this system looks like it's going to be a heavy rain event for one thing. Our tropical rains may be upwards of one to three inches of rain. Also, the potential for some gusty winds. Southerly winds are going to push a lot of the water out of the sounds up to the north, uh, up towards, say, the, the northern sides of the Pamlico and the Noose Rivers. Uh, so we want people that, are, that live on the northern side of those rivers to be ready for possibly some water rises, maybe one to three feet in some locations uh, with this system because it's going to be a persistent south and east-southeast wind uh, through your day on Friday, especially for uh, Thursday night and Friday. I uh, will step forward again, uh, and this is early in the. This is about two o'clock in the morning on Saturday, and most of the energy is gone. But you see the cold front back off to the west. Here is uh, here is uh, Saturday afternoon, 
and we're starting to get out of that it starts to break up a little bit that that energy but still enough on top of us that we will see chances for showers and thunderstorms through the day on saturday here's sunday uh and we still have enough energy with us that we're going to continue to see chances for showers and thunderstorms the interesting thing is that at this point we're getting out of more of a a widespread rain event to more of a scattered type of situation where you're not going to see rain all day long but when it does it's going to happen uh, very similar to what we had about two or three weeks ago where we were having scattered showers and thunderstorms like pop-up thunderstorms each and every day here's monday afternoon and still with that little piece of energy now this is something that we're going to watch up here to the north you'll see it start to edge down south heading towards uh tuesday now the thing is that the european model it's a lot faster with this. This brings it down here as we head into Tuesday. The GFS waits until Wednesday to get it in here. And that's going to bring down a, a, a stationary boundary, it looks like, uh, to kind of lay itself across the area uh, for Wednesday. So it looks like we're going to stay in an extended wet period of time here. And going into uh, next Thursday, uh, we're talking about a maybe one or two uh, some showers and thunderstorms then as well so once again we're staying in a uh, wet pattern over the next several days all right and here is the surface output on the gfs once again the low trying to get its act together down in the gulf of mexico at this point and by tomorrow most of the moisture is see most of the moisture on the eastern side of the storm and we're already starting to get some of that moisture getting pulled up from the south and southeast at this point so once the flow turns more southerly that is going to help bring in the moisture going into tomorrow uh, we'll fast forward into Friday and you see the low basically on top of us at that point now I'll, I'll show you what the European is showing uh, from the zero Z run earlier uh, and we're going to have two different types of weather depending on what's going to happen. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And you see the low tracking up the coast at that point. Uh, here's Saturday, and it's gone. Uh, it's still with some scattered showers and thunderstorms with the remnants of the second piece of energy on top of us for Saturday afternoon. But once again, it's going to be scattered activity. This isn't going to be an issue where we're going to see all day rain. Once again, scattered activity for Sunday as well as Monday. And on Tuesday, we may get a little bit of a break on Tuesday on the GFS. Now, the Europeans a different story. It's wet on, on, uh, on Tuesday. And you see what happens on Wednesday. You see that stationary boundary sagging southward. That's what the Europeans showing. It is wetter, but it's also a day earlier. So we'll have to watch for uh, that differencing and modeling uh, going towards the latter half of this week. Here's Wednesday afternoon. You see the uh, this boundary kind of laying right through here. And here's Thursday, it's further south, and a little piece of energy back to the north and east of us. That's going to probably bring us another chance for rain showers. Now here's some of the early track guidance off of the 12Z run, um, and you can see the different modeling. Basically, anywhere in the state of North Carolina has a chance for the center of low pressure to go over. Now, I, I want to reiterate, that is the center of low pressure. That does not mean the moisture shield is going to move over you. That's a different story, and that's why we want to clarify this these tracks are trying to find the center of low pressure it looks like this is going to be an eastern weighted storm where most of the moisture is going to be slung to the east of the center of low pressure so an inland track would bring more rain showers across eastern North Carolina so if you want rain you want a track that's going to be pulling closer to I-95 um, and I-85 if you don't want rain, and I know it's the weekend, no one wants to see rain, you want a track that goes up the east, uh, right up the coast, but still, that doesn't matter. If it's a named storm or not, still tropical type moisture is going to be in the area. What we were talking about yesterday on the television side, there's two different scenarios that could play out here. A track that is further, closer to the coast, and we, we've seen this model come right up the Highway 17 corridor the last couple of days, and that's kind of what the GFS is also painting. The European is just a touch inland. The uh, Canadian model is just a touch inland, and the NAM is all the way back over to the foothills. So two different. There's so many different models uh, trying to depict where this center of low pressure is going to be. It's kind of hard to pinpoint where exactly it will be because they have serious implications on our weather pattern. A track that is going to be closer to the coast will see coastal rains and also coastal winds. The winds will likely be anywhere from 30 to 40 miles per hour at times, gust up to words of 30 to 40 miles per hour. And drier inland, inland locations would be a touch, uh, so much drier, it'd probably be, you know, temperatures 
well warmer than what we're forecasting right now and even some sunshine if it tracks closer to the coast kind of like what the GFS is painting the European like I said it's a touch inland if it comes up I-95 we introduce chances of severe weather there's going to be enough spin in the atmosphere that we could get some small spin up tornadoes to go along with it as well any land and this is what we hear this is what you hear every time we have a land falling tro tropical system with the spin in the atmosphere it doesn't matter you can get a spin up tornado like that it is not that hard for these things to spin up a tornado so an inland track is what we could potentially see and more favored at this point uh, it looks like most of the modeling pulls it inland rather than offshore and the tracks have been steadily inland so we want to reiterate that more than likely we're going to have a track that's further inland expecting widespread rainfall showers and thunderstorms and on top of that the risk for severe weather and the main time frame for that will likely be between uh, late Thursday evening into early Friday morning through Friday and into the afternoon hours and then finally starts to get on out of here but the rain chances don't stop there we obviously have uh, chances for rain showers over the next several days that's going to do it for me this afternoon here on the ENC weather update you guys can stay up with us on Facebook as well as Twitter and WNCT.com Chief Meteorologist David Sawyer is back in this afternoon for 5 536 as well as 10 on the CW and 11 o'clock right back on WNCT and Dante Jones will be in tomorrow morning at five to, between the hours of 5 to 7 for morning edition you guys have a great afternoon and once again we want you just to be aware stay weather aware for Thursday and Friday of this up uh, for this uh, system that's going to be making its way up the coast